it's almost incredible to me that 25 years has passed. Before there was Oklahoma City. I can still see faces and people and times and even smells. There was Waco, Texas. And Bob Rick saw firsthand the mistakes authorities made in handling a 51 day standoff at a religious compound. It came to a tragic end April 19th, 1993. Exactly two years later, Rick's got a call while at a charity golf tournament in Shawnee. He was simply told there'd been a bombing at the federal building. I had investigated numerous bombings in the past. And most times you're talking about a pipe bomb that takes a chunk out of the building and and uh, you may or may not get people injured. He was speaking with one of his agents while heading back to the city when he made an important connection. And he said, uh, Bob, he said, uh, you remember what today is? And I said, what do you mean? He said, today is April 19th. And uh, almost immediately, uh, uh, I was pretty convinced that it had something to do with Waco. And when did you realize this wasn't just some little pipe bomb? I did not realize the enormity of uh, what had transpired until I got there. My initial thoughts were, we're, we're going to have a catastrophe here that the United States has never seen. Ricks found himself in charge of not just the investigation, but also the rescue and recovery. That was the FBI's responsibility at the time. He immediately let Oklahoma City police and fire chiefs know that he would help them, but he would not interfere. I have to work with the police and the fire to make sure that we're all integrated. Then you have the other competing interests that are there from the Secret Service to the ATF to, to tax people. We even had military people. Ricks had to assemble a team of investigators and immediately create a field office from the ground up, something that usually takes months. Was that the, the biggest challenge in the at that point for you was kind of getting the logistics and setting up that office or what was the biggest challenge? Uh, the, the biggest challenge is not only is the rescue operation going on, but we now have a, a worldwide investigation going. Some reporters doubted did we have the capability of handling this at at, uh, at, at our level, even though we're just a small hick town as some try to portray us, which we're not by any stretch. That investigation was massive. By the time it was over, the Bureau had conducted more than 28,000 interviews, followed some 43,000 investigative leads, amassed three and a half tons of evidence, and reviewed nearly a billion pieces of information. In the end, the government that Timothy McVeigh hated and hoped to topple swiftly captured him and convincingly convicted both him and his co-conspirators. I have no doubt that we were able to capture and prosecute or at least work through the criminal justice system, all the principles that were involved. Ricks delivering on a promise he made to seek justice. This was probably the FBI's finest hour. But he also achieved his other goal of having all agencies and the entire community working in cooperation. We all came together, we all bonded together, and we all had common and mutual goals that we wanted to see this succeed, and that's one reason that we were so successful. Now, 25 years later, the memories aren't something Rick's always welcomes. Sometimes when, when I walk away from it for a while, I, I don't want to even think about it. But his desire to share the successes and lessons of the Oklahoma City bombing is much stronger. Who in the world would have thought such an event would have happened in Oklahoma City, which means if it can happen here, it can happen anywhere. The unthinkable can become reality in an instant. And Oklahomans, Rick says, should be proud of what we've accomplished 25 years later and always. For the first 10 years of the Memorial Museum, there was no mention of the change to include an extensive exhibit. By the way, the FBI does still have several agents who continue to work on this case today. Be sure to join us this Thursday night at 7 as we take a look back on the 25th anniversary of the bombing. You're going to hear more stories like that one. You're going to hear from survivors and people who helped move the city forward from darkness.